I tend to think of beliefs and isms as tools rather than positions in and of themselves. I tend to see them as uh, ladders, as rungs on a ladder towards a truth or towards truth itself rather than positions that one ought to cling to. Um, ultimately, they become nothing more than the transformation of an axiom into an established or a, an established fact. This boxes in one's thinking. I don't see how it could not. Although, as I say, I see these things as tools, and I suppose if you're a whatever ist, uh, in, in a practical sense, um, but not in an absolute sense, then isms, beliefs, can be useful. But we can't mistake the map for the destination. Um, and one of the ways that I think that it's very useful to approach isms, to approach beliefs, is to subscribe to every last one that you possibly can. Subscribe to them all. A certain degree of, shall I call it, courage is required to do that. For example, it's uh, September the 11th, or, yeah, September the 11th, 2001. You're sitting in a coffee shop in New York City, and you can see the Twin Towers there. Suddenly, bang, something horrible happens. The rumor mill tells you what it was, what just happened. <clears throat> you hear that Muslim fanatics have attacked us. Us. Do you want to understand what that person was thinking when they cooked up this scheme? Make yourself believe what they believe. Think about what their universe is like. Get into their mind. Get into their feelings. Become that person. Do everything in your power to see the universe through that person's, uh, the matrix of that person's being, that person's feelings, thoughts, whatever. This is it. As I say, this does apparently require a great deal of courage because what, when, when you take that sort of point of view, there is a concern that you ain't coming back out of there. <clears throat> that if I decide that I'm going to believe what Osama bin Laden believes, to, to try and understand what Osama bin Ladenism is, what his entire way of seeing the world is, if I actually want to understand that way of thinking, I have to become that kind of thinking temporarily, if necessary. Uh, I have to actually subscribe to his beliefs, to his isms. This is not easily done. There's an enormous amount of fear there that has to be overcome. When you fear and hate something, there is a almost knee-jerk reluctance to attempt to understand it. Um, in fact, I would even say that fear and hate are blocks to understanding. So you must understand that which you fear and hate. The only way to understand something is to become it, and the only way to become it uh, is to use the full force of your imagination. People are afraid to do that. Because you sort of think, once I get into that headspace, I'm not coming out. This can apply to just about anything. Anything that you disagree with, anything that you don't understand, anything that you believe is making this universe less comfortable a place to be in. How do you avoid becoming contaminated by these competing isms, these competing beliefs. How do you avoid turning into a 
al qaedist when you seek to understand al qaeda um, in the lord of the rings it was always advised uh, that to understand you, you really shouldn't study the dark arts or the dark lord himself you shouldn't try to understand him too much because it, you run the risk of being drawn into the dark lord and becoming like him Saruman fell prey to that um, Darth Vader fell prey to that in Star Wars but I don't really see that there's any other way to really understand things. Now this doesn't have to be just subscribing to a negativism. It can You can also subscribe temporarily to a positivism. You can subscribe to say complete nonviolence, unconditional love, that sort of thing. Um, and it does create sort of a, a space between you and beliefs in and of themselves, not you and your beliefs, because when you see belief in, in those terms, you really don't have any beliefs anymore. Um, <clears throat> but beliefs become tools. They become rungs on a ladder towards something. Um, and if you can put yourself in the mind of someone who has a belief, you want to understand Marxism, become a Marxist. You want to understand Christianity, become a Christian. You want to understand um, antinatalists, antinatalism, become an antinatalist. Follow your imagination directly into these beliefs. And <clears throat> I suppose it's a difficult thing for a lot of people to do because people, a lot of people seem to have the need for beliefs, for isms, for groundedness in this universe. Um, but I don't really see that, that that's necessary for everyone. There are those of us who can, or who want to, maybe it's just a question of temperament, who want to see everything from every conceivable point of view. Um, I think that that, as opposed to solipsism or nihilism or nothingism, is more a species of curiosity. Rather than rejecting any belief in anything and saying it's all garbage, I would say it's all fascinating, it's all relevant, it's all uh, worthy of examination. Every ism out there. Follow them all. Um, and have faith that when you do follow them all, or have confidence, I suppose, not faith, have confidence when you follow them all, that you will remain yourself. I think most people remain themselves even when they subscribe to an ism anyway, but when you switch around between multiple isms, um, there is a tendency to fear that, again, you're going to get sucked into them all. I'm reminded of a quote by Sir Lawrence Olivier, where he was being interviewed, I think it was by Ed Bradley of 60 Minutes, where he asked him, um, who is Laurence Olivier? And Laurence Olivier said, uh, Laurence Olivier said, I don't know. In other words, he was so used to acting out so many different parts that he had forgotten who he was. And yet, there is a Sir Laurence Olivier in there. It's not that he has ceased to exist. It's just that he doesn't see personality anymore in those terms. He sees various personas. That's, I think, the best way to, for some of us to approach beliefs and isms. Um, belief is a tool. Belief is a vehicle. Belief is um, a road along the way to something, but it's not the destination itself. Thank you.